I could not believe it. There is a ban list update. Now, before you go crazy, it's a mini ban list. What? Well, we're getting new cards this weekend in about two days. Cards on the forbidden limited list upon release. What? Let's open this up. The cards listed below are scheduled to be added to the game and will be on the forbidden limited list at the time of their release. This decision was made in line with our policies. Your policy? Our aim with this is to provide a dynamic dueling experience through the introduction of new cards while also managing the risk and severity of reduced diversity in the game due to these cards' potential popularity. Holy moly. They knew how broken the new adventure cards would be and they have preemptively semi-limited them. Right of Erismir, the Water Enchantress of the Temple. I could not believe this because Konami does a full refund if they restrict your cards, but when your specific cards get restricted and you built an entire deck around them, the rest of your deck is probably most likely gonna no longer be good. So if you were to build a Prank Kids deck over around these cards and then they were to semi-limit them in the future, you might be left with a prank kid deck you don't even want to play anymore. So let's look at some this on the website. This is nuts. So if you don't know, the new selection pack is coming in about two days. These are the expected cards. And now the Water Enchantress and the Rite of Arismir are going to preemptively be semi-limited. Now, in Japan, they are limited to one. What happened was they were both semi-limited in Japan and then they realized that was not enough. In the follow-up ban list, they then limited both cards to one. I cannot believe it because in the TCG, they're unlimited, they're fully unlimited. I think more so in the TCG, they're trying to protect your investment in the cards. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a $300 to $500 investment to have the entire adventure engine in your deck. That is nuts. And I will be releasing soon a video, the basic combos of the Adventure Engine and the best decks to use with the Adventure Engine, even after they are gonna be semi-limited preemptively. Now they did this with Fusion Destiny, but this card wasn't new. They only preemptively semi-limited a card based off of a new card that was going to be released, but they didn't touch the new card that was gonna be released. So this sets a brand new precedent that they are willing to semi-limit a card before it is released. You know, I have to say, I'm very happy that they're willing to do this. I hate to think that any card that's coming out that's gonna be imbalanced, where they got to play with the cards within the OCG or TCG, or see the reception from the community and its impact on the meta, and they don't have to repeat past mistakes that if it had too much of an impact on the meta, they're not gonna repeat that with us. So good, that is good. I want to play a balanced game. I, I still can't believe this though. The DPE, th this is such a respectable decision that it's gonna cost them potentially millions of dollars. Now, I know anyone could just say that statement in the air, but I got some numbers for you. I have the mobile numbers. In June, the game only, only made $5 million. Can you imagine only making $5 million on mobile? What a joke, what a trash amount of money to make. Well, what released in June? That was the Valiant Wings pack, which, do you see anyone playing these cards? Do you see them teching them in any decks? Well, that's why, they only made a measly $5 million. What a joke. But in May, they released DPE, which is in pretty much everyone's deck, and also top tier sword souls. So they released a top tier deck, and they release a card that everyone's pretty much everyone is playing in their deck. And how did that do for their revenue? Well, boom, $11 million on mobile only, and it's mainly a PC game. So they probably, you know, more than double revenue on mobile, and then probably a, a ton, maybe double, triple money on PC. Who knows? Or it will probably be the same. Now, th that shows that they're gonna possibly lose millions of dollars for this respectable change where everyone would have gone all in on buying these cards to get three of, three of. We don't know if the Rite of Errors Mirror is gonna be ultra rare also, it might be super rare, but damn, this is crazy. This is absolute madness and 
you know, again, I commend Konami for this. It gives me better hope for Master Duel that they actually care. Because I think the sentiment around Master Duel is Konami doesn't care. This clearly shows that they care. That they're willing to take a revenue hit to maintain the balance of the game. So good. Good on you, Konami. That's crazy. We're going to be working around this. I'm going to show you the best decks around this. I believe on the release of the new pack on the top decks page, we're going to have a wa the Adventure Engine tab where you can click on. It's going to show all the decks using the Adventure Engine. Now, you might be wondering, is this going to be a huge impact on the decks that would use it? It is a big impact, but the cards should still have a big impact in the game. I do believe they're still going to be used in at least two top tier decks, at least. At least they'll have two spots on the tier list. Prank Kids should still be top tier with it. Phantom Knights should still be top tier with it. So Phantom Knights will probably jump to tier two. Prank Kids out of nowhere will jump up. I do think Virtual World will very likely use it. I'm gonna show you all the deck lists and all that good stuff. Sword Soul, Tenyi, I do not expect them to use it because they are too reliant on their normal summon. The deck makes it so you cannot activate the card effect of a monster that is normal summoned if you want to use the Rite of Error's Mirror. That's the main detriment to using the adventure cards. And if you don't really know what they do, they essentially just give you a token that's 2,000 attack, 2,000 defense, the ability to return a floodgate or any card in the field back to the hand, and you have a Wandering Griffin Rider, which is going to be an Omni Negate, and you could attack with both of them for 4,000 damage. You don't use up your normal summon. You could sync or you could exceed. There's no summon restrictions. It's nuts, and you'll see combos from there soon. And that's pretty much it. Absolute madness. I can't believe it. The Mad Lads did, did it. Semi-limit. And hold up. Got a new structure deck. Is there anything new here? New structure deck? What? I think this is coming with the mate? What? The, with the premium mate. Oh, my mate. So she turns into a dragon. Let's see right before when she's about to do it. Uh, does she even do it? Ooh, right here, right here. Ready? Ready? Boom! Oh my! So that's coming, and it looks like there's no new cards with it. It's just a structure deck. Okay, reprint. That's fine. I'm, I'm skimming. I don't see any new cards. I had no confirms anything that's new. Uh, oh, a, a new Daryl. Is that the, the mate? All right. We done with the news. Thank you very much. We are out. Hold up. I got, I got like 20 seconds. Oh, we cool? Let's chill. Let's chill. Let me know what you're excited about for the new pack. I, I know I, I should have mentioned more about the Evil Twin Trouble Sunny. I think that this will be diamond worthy. I can't say this will be top tier though. This is definitely going to be a much better deck though. And the Magic Keys, honestly, that's probably not gonna do much. And I will possibly be implementing a small worlds feature on the website because this card is incredibly complex and complicated. Yeah, I will show you how to use it in a separate video. If it actually comes, it might not come. All right, we are out. Let's go.